Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at some examples of applying Snell's law to different refraction problems. So Snell's law is designed to model refraction, which means when light moves from one medium into another across a boundary. So Snell's law has four key parts that we can see here. It has the refractive index before the boundary, called N1, the angle of incidence measured to the normal, the angle of refraction, again measured to the normal, and we have the refractive index after the boundary called N2. So if we look at the diagram on the right hand side, we can see the, from the direction of the arrows, which side is the kind of N1 side, it's the one before it hits the boundary, and which side is N2 afterwards. Okay, so that's our general setup for Snell's law problems. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get you to try out some examples of using it and we'll see how you do. So we're going to apply this at the first boundary, the air glass boundary. And you can see from the direction of the arrows which one the first boundary it encounters is. So what I want you to do is you're going to pause this video and I'm going to, you're going to have a go at these three questions that you've got here. And then I'll show you how it's done so you can see how well you did. So pause the video now, have a go at these questions, and then I'll take you through them. Okay, so I'm assuming that you've now had an attempt at these questions. So let's take a look. So first of all, at the first boundary, it starts in air. So N1 is going to be 1.0. The angle of incidence is going to be 50 degrees. Remember, the angle should be measured to the normal. And the angle of refraction is going to be 30 degrees, as it's already indicated on the diagram. OK, so that's our first stage. So now we're going to, essentially, the thing we don't know is the refractive index of glass. So we're going to rearrange Snell's law to make the refractive index of glass the subject. Or in other words, we're going to make N2 the subject. And I'm going to do that by dividing both sides of the equation by sine r which make, leaves N2 by itself. Okay, so once we've done that, we can essentially plug our numbers in. Our refractive index of air N1 was 1, sine I is sine 50, and sine R is sine 30. Put all those together, and we get N2 is 1.5. There were lots, there's some numbers coming after that, but two significant figures would be appropriate for the answer, because all of our data was two significant figures. OK, so that's how we calculate a refractive index using Snell's law. So we're going to have a look at a slightly different problem. We're instead going to look at using Snell's law to calculate an unknown angle. So we're now going to look at the second boundary, uh, the glass to air boundary on the right hand side. Again, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and have a go at these three questions here. Um, so pause the video now. Okay, so I'm assuming that you've had an attempt at these questions. So let's take a look. So at the second boundary, the light is starting in glass. So N1 is the 1.5 we calculated earlier. It's going into air, so N2 is going to be 1. And you can see the angle of incidence is 30 degrees. We've got it shown on our diagram. So if we want to calculate what the angle of refraction is, the first thing we're going to do is make sine r the subject of the uh, equation. And the way we do that is dividing both sides by n2. OK, so we've done that. So now what we're going to do is look at how we can actually calculate what sine r is and then show that that angle is indeed 40 degrees. So first of all, we're going to plug our numbers in to calculate sine r. So n1 was 1.5, n2 is 1.0, and sine i is uh, sine of 30, and that comes out as 0.75. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the inverse sine function, uh, as you have in your calculator, and you usually access this by doing shift sine. So we're going to do the inverse sine of 0.75, and that tells us the angle of refraction is 49 degrees, which means the angle to the boundary would be 41 degrees, 90 minus 49 which is approximately 40 degrees. Remember, we rounded the 1.5 to 
So we shouldn't expect to get exactly 40 degrees, but we get pretty close, so that's fine. Okay, so the third thing we're going to take a look at using Snell's law for is at the critical angle, which is still an example of refraction. It's the point at which you switch from refraction to refraction. So we've got glass with refractive index 1.5, and we were looking at going at the boundary going from glass to air. Remember that the process of total internal reflection can only happen if you're going from a high refractive index to low refractive index. So anyway, pause the video now, have a go at these questions here. All right, so I'm assuming you've had a crack. So let's see how you've done at calculating your critical angles. Okay, so it's starting in glass, so N1 is 1.5. It's trying to go into air, so it, N2 is 1.0. And the angle of refraction we can see is 90 degrees. So therefore, sine R is one. So if you try, if you type in sine of 90, that comes out as one. So those are the three parameters that we know. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make the sine of the angle of incidence, or the, in this case, the sine of the critical angle, the subject. So sine R was one. So that's in the first stage of working, that's dropped out, and I've just replaced sine r with sine c. And then I'm going to divide both sides by n1 to give us sine c as the subject of the equation. Then what we can do is we can plug our values of n2 and n1 in. And just a quick thing to look out for at this point, your on the top line should the bigger should have the bigger value because you can't have signs greater than one. So your bigger refractive index would have to be on the top line. That's something you can spot to check you've done it correctly. So anyway, uh, we found sine C is 0.66, blah, 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 blah. So therefore C is the inverse sine of 0.66, blah, 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 which comes out as 42 degrees, uh, which would match up with an experiment you would do, usually get a value somewhere between 40 and 45 as the critical angle for glass. And that concludes this video looking at three different scenarios where we would apply Snell's law.